I would like to think that this is a a stream on Bible studies, on God, on doctrine, on theology, but really it is a document documentation, documentary, if you will, of me trying to figure out how to hotkey my mute button on OBS. All right, let's go. Let's do this. Okay, so uh, if you've been um, with me the entire time, uh, or this is your first time, my name is Joe Louthan. I am the the curator and the writer behind Theologic.us, where I have taken um, all of my series of the things I have written, uh, Bible studies, commentaries, uh, family devotions, gospel meditations, um, whole books, and I am broadcasting that to uh, you, the faithful listener. Uh, if this is your first time, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, we are... Uh, if you're like me, that life is pretty busy, and sometimes trying to catch a, 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 a Twitch live stream is uh, not uh, feasible, but that's okay. I got you. Uh, I'm also on. Actually, I can actually show this. Uh, I am on. Let's do this. Let's see. If you catch me, of course, you're here, twitch.theologic.us, and you catch me at youtube.theologic.us. I'll redirect you straight to the uh, the YouTube also. Um, actually, I actually forgot where is my podcast because I don't have a simple link to that. So, for example, for example, let me go here and... Let's do, for instance, we can do Apple Podcasts. So you look me up. Uh, I am listed there as The Study by Joseph Louthan. And uh, we have, uh, uh, last episode was a couple days ago on Monday. And so it should all be right there. Also, I'm on Spotify as well. So Apple, Spotify. I use um, Overcast uh, as my podcast manager. I really recommend that uh, app. Uh, I really love it a lot, and you can listen, and that connects to Apple, so you, you don't have to do double duty there. So that's really, really convenient. Now, oh, a little Starcraft. So we are doing. Let me get back to my home. Here we go. And. And not doing Bible study in Romans, I'm going to do gospel meditations. So if you've been with us for uh, a little bit, and you've been in this series on Wednesdays at 5 p.m., um, I originally call it meditations, but it wasn't really introspective. It wasn't really like, let me think about that, and how does that make me feel? What it ended up being was gospel meditations. Like, how does this, how does the, how does this passage apply to my life? How does this, how does the, and where's the gospel and all that? And so that was... Uh, it's not quite a Bible study. It's more just a do, uh, yeah, yeah, devotion uh, with the gospel truth saturated through it, I hope, by God's grace. I pray, I hope. And um, let's see. So today we are doing 1 Timothy 18 through 20 is Christ our all. Let's go to uh, the Lord with prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, in this moment right now, I'm being very, very mindful of my friends who are going through gospel struggles. They're going through spiritual uh, struggles, uh, wrestling and, and being tormented by and struggling with sin. Lord, would you, would you call out to them? Would you call them to be yours? Would you call them? into your salvation and your presence? Would you open their eyes? Would you renew their minds? Would you give them a new heart and new desires? We love you so much. And we ask this in your son's name. Amen.
I want to say before we get started, I've been always dying to do this. I have no other reason, but I just want to do this. In the last, if you have, uh, if you listen to Monday's episode, and it'll be, let's, I'll take you there real quick. Bible study Romans, it's going to be uh, Romans 1, 13 through 15. In the, the, everything I was speaking about, I was talking about, like, um, I was going along with Charles Hodge in so much as that sovereignty is not a attribute of God, but it's rather a result of all the, his perfections of everything else that he is. And I misspoke and said that out of all those perfections comes his holiness. No, God is holy. Now, God is sovereign, and not, let's not get bogged down. Go listen to the episode. Uh, you're like, what is he talking about? Go listen to the episode. It's the last episode, May 17th. Uh, and I misspoke in that, and, and, but the everywhere else in the, in the podcast, I made it very, very clearly. It's that we, I was trying to give you, the, the reader and the listener, a proper understanding of God's sovereignty. It's not, uh, my ultimate point was not that things happen or bad things happen. It's like, well, God is sovereign, so we're just going to sit in it. We're going to walk through Romans. I'm going to walk through the pastoral epistles. I'm going to walk through family devotions. It, I, I want to stress to you the how important, how urgent and critical it, that you were to know that if you are in Christ, God is your father. If God is your father, you can sit and just be with him. Like, he may not just fix your, that, that everything is broken around you, but he will be there. And because we know he is God, he is redeemer. And if he's redeeming, he's going to make it something, not just fixing the broken, but making beautiful out of brokenness and that's what he does and so but you got to turn to him you got to trust him you got to run to him and that's my encouragement to you so anyway that is uh when i mess up and i catch myself or somebody else catches me uh i you know i'm not i'm not trying to derail the episode but i want to cut as soon as i can get to the next episode i'm gonna be quick hopefully and i pray i pray i always do this for the rest of my life if i have a moment where like I get to preach in the church and then be invited next week to preach in the church and like, Hey, you know what? I kind of misspoke here or I misspoke Monday night or Sunday night or Sunday morning or whatever. Please forgive me on that. I just misspoke. Um, I hope to do that for the rest of my life. And this is the reason why I love streaming. This is the reason why I love doing streaming and do you need my face no uh I, but i am talking and i'm interacting and 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 i'm i'm going by what you see on the screen so i love i love open uh obs open broadcast uh scene service services i don't even know what it's called but anyway obs uh, because you get to see what I see. Like, these are my notes. And, like, you know, instead of, like, me just reading out to you or a bunch of scribbles on a, on a paper and let, let me try to teach the class, well, I follow along with me. And you're like, hey, wait a second. What is, what is that? What are you trying to say there? Uh, and just point it out. So I uh, hope this is helpful for you. Uh, it keeps me honest. And uh, But you know what? We're here. Not, not how I perfectly I can speak, which I don't, uh, or uh, how great I can put together, like, you know, cohesive thought. I'm not that great at it. Uh, I'm just here to point you and I to the gospel every single, every single time. If you think that this series or any of these series or any series I'm going to do in the future, you're going to think that is not gospel centered or you think it's not going to be about the gospel. It's not about repentance. It's not going to be about turning to Christ and trusting in, and him alone. If you think I'm going to go off of that, I'm not. So if you're bored of that, you're just going to have to watch. But if you need it, just like I need it, just like everybody who has ever walked the earth always needs the gospel, uh, you're welcome to join. Welcome to sit. And let's, uh, let's, let's talk about God, okay? So here we go. We're, we are three. This is our third episode in uh, First Timothy. I'm really enjoying this. 
Uh, what I'm really enjoying is like <laughs> the the label I gave meditation and call it gospel meditation. So we know it's not about me, but it's about or even what I think or know or how I feel necessarily. But it is really about the good news. OK. Here is the text and bear with me. If you are on the podcast, you, if you're watching the stream or watching YouTube, you see this all the time. If you're in the podcast, there are going to be like pauses. I, I guarantee you it's not the audio. Um, it's really that I have to drink a lot of water when I talk. So bear with me. If you hear a pause, a long pause, that's what it's about. Okay. And I'm still trying to work out my mute button situation, but here we are. Okay. All right, I really hope that worked. So I'm going to go and try to find that in the recording. If it didn't or did not work, it's going to be published anyway. So here we go. All right, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1, starting at verse 18. All right, Timothy, my son, I am giving you this instruction in keeping with the prophecies previously made about you so that by recalling them, you might fight the good faith, having faith in a good conscience, which some have rejected and have shipwrecked the faith. Among them are Hyamnesis and Alexander, whom I have delivered to Satan, so that they may be taught not to blaspheme. So, if you love, here's the meditation. This is what I want you to walk away. Let's think about this for a second. If you love the Lord your God, you're called to ministry. You and I are called to ministry. You are called to lift up, serve, love, encourage the body of Christ and neighbors around you, okay? But we need to examine, I want to, in this moment, I want to examine the intersection between faith and ministry actually meet, okay? Let me explain about that. Let's start with the, uh, verse 13. I am giving you this, in Timothy, I am giving you this instruction in keeping with the prophecies previously made about you. This is the intersection. God in through his word has given us instruction. Well, he first of all, he gives us the command, the gospel command to put your trust in Christ alone. Start there. When you put your trust, you're you're saying, Lord, I trust you with my sin. Deliver me from death. Okay? So, and then a part of that Bible is loving the Lord your God with all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, and then loving your neighbor as yourself, right? And then all the instructions that come with that to minister to one another. But here is the uh, in keeping with what has God said about you. Now, this is going to be tricky. OK, so there's there's two people there. Are two. If you're a Christian, there are two types of Christians who are listening to this podcast right now. They're listening. They're on the stream. They're they're listening right now. Two types of Christians. Right. One who didn't grow up with prophecies and they're all like, what is he talking about? Um, I don't know what you're talking about. I've seen that word. Uh, I've seen it a lot in the Old Testament. I uh, wasn't really exposed to it in the New Testament. I don't know what's going on. And then there's some who have just like, oh, yeah, prophecies are a way of life. Um, uh, prophecies are the balling thing out of the. Uh, out of Christianity, I depend on prophecies. Some would take it so far. I'm not saying they would say this explicitly, but they would say prophecies trump the word of God. Okay. So I'm not a balanced person, but somewhere between those two extremes is the actual biblical truth. So through the pastoral epistles, Paul is giving these things to Timothy and Titus. I need you. I need you to command and teach these things. What are these things? Well, I don't want to get ahead because we're about to get into those things. This is the first letter to Timothy. And as far as I know, it's like, you know, I think this is chronological in 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus. Um, so as we're reading through the, the, these epistles, we're, we're going to examine what Paul gives pastors and ministers, you're a minister, in due time. We're going to do that in due time, I promise you. Yet... Paul is giving instruction in keeping with the prophecies previously made about you. So what, what are the, first of all, what are these prophecies he's talking about in relation to Timothy? 
Well, jumping ahead in this letter, in 1 Timothy 4, starting at verse 11, command, God, and again, Paul says the exact same thing. Command and teach these things. Don't let anyone despise your youth, but set an example for the believers in speech and conduct in love and faith and purity. Until I come, give your attention to public reading, exhortation, and teaching. Here we go. Don't neglect the gift that is in you. It was given to you through prophecy with the laying on hands by the council of elders. Practice these things. Be committed to them so that your progress may be evident to all. Pay close attention to your life and your teaching. Persevere in these things for in doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Now, again, some of y'all have backgrounds with spiritual gifts. Um, don't have that background. Let me tell you, spiritual gifts are real. The work of the Holy Spirit is real. It's continuing to this day for real. Okay. Now, some of you guys did grow up with spiritual gifts. You did grow up with the gifts of the Holy Spirit and you, and you are, I'm I'm, I'm not just making a general assumption. Uh, I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to show you where if you have received prophetic words, and, and guys, every Christian, have you ever been godly encouraged or biblically encouraged, right? Well, guess what? That's prophecy right there. Just go ahead and mark it down, okay? That's prophecy. Now, if you have been given a prophetic word, it is upon you and me. It's upon you to take b- rejoice in it, rejoice in the, the word that you've been given, but then go and cross-examine that. Make sure it stands up to uh, Scripture. And listen, I'm going to give you, this is what I see from a lot of prophets, prophets, or people with the prophetic gift. They like to spit a verse and then give a prophecy, and that verse has nothing to do with the prophecy, and they will try to explain the verse, and it has nothing to do with what that verse actually meant. You have the whole same Holy Spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. If you trust in him, you have that same Holy Spirit. This is the same Holy Spirit that Christ has promised he will bring to remembrance all the things that Christ taught. What are all the things that Christ taught? Let's start with the word of God. Well, the Holy Spirit, you're like, I, I'm, not a good li- I'm not a good listener. I'm not a good reader. I'm not, a, I'm not very smart. Hey, I'm not either. Okay. So guess what? You, you, for you to know the Bible, for you to know what God has said and to understand that, that's God. It's dependent on God. And I don't care how high your EQ or low your EQ or IQ or whatever, whatever personality test, I don't, I don't care. None of that matters. God matters. And he, for his children, he will supernaturally help you understand what he is saying to you and in fact there is no other way there's not a natural way and supernatural way there is just the supernatural way understanding what god has said is completely supernatural if you don't believe me go up and look i believe it's first corinthians chapter 2 around verse 12 go and go examine that and get holler back at me okay let me continue second peter uh, chapter 1, ver- starting at verse 20. Above all, you know this. No prophecy of Scripture comes from a prophet's own interpretation because no prophecy will ever came by the will of man. Instead, men spoke from God as though they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Okay? This is not of our, uh, you receive any word of encouragement. That is going to be by God, not of your own. And to further along, if you want more information about this, read 1 Corinthians 14, but just to give you some context, uh, a certain at verse 22, speaking in tongues, then is intended as a sign, not for believers, but for unbelievers, while prophecy is not for unbelievers, but for believers. So in this moment, I'm going to demystify prophecy. Prophecy, in short, you ready? Here it is. Points to all of what Christ has done. In the Old Testament, look, follow with me, that I'm not saying anything out of sync. In the Old Testament, 
it is what Christ was going to do based on the promises of God. We know those promises of God are yes and amen. So when God says, I am going to do it, that is equivalent as him actually doing it. This only applies to God. God cannot break his promises. He is without sin and he does not lie. Okay. So when he says he's going to do it, he does it. Well, we know that for a fact because he promised the Messiah in Jesus Christ. And there are like 220 prophecies in the Old Testament uh, foretelling, foreshadowing, for pro prophesying about the coming of Jesus. Okay. Now, now that we have Christ revealed, crucified, resurrected and ascended, we get to admonish, encourage, and point all believers and all, I would say all people, back to the finished work of Christ. We have all received godly encouragement in one form or another. Prophecy is a bit more specific. And what I want to say is it's not, it's not fortune telling. What I, what I'm going to put it like this, it actually hits closer to the heart, but it is no less tested by the word of God. And here's a side note. You I've I'm only putting this because I have shown people the scripture that we must test prophecies according to the word of God. I get pushed back on this hard. Okay? A side note. Anybody who says you cannot test all prophecy against scripture isn't really trying hard enough. There is no first of all there's no need to rush the testing. Just pray to the Spirit, and he will bring to remembrance all that God has said and taught. Just go and say, Lord, okay, I received this. Lord, I received this godly encouragement. It has lifted up my soul. I want to believe that's from you. It has, it has, sent, me, it has sent me to you, flying to you, Lord. But is it, is it from you? Show me in your word where you have said this. Show me. Show me where it lines up with the word. And I promise you, guess what? I promise you the Holy Spirit will do that. I can promise that because I am promising out of the out of the word of God. I'm not promising out of myself. This is not my experience or whatever. I just know because God said so. Okay, here we go. But this is where I'm basing this on him. There's two verses and we're going to link them together. Deuteronomy 18, starting at verse 18. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. I will put my words in his mouth and he will tell them everything I command him. I will hold accountable whoever does not listen to my words that he speaks in my name. But the prophet who presumes to speak a message in my name that I have not commanded him to speak or speaks in the names of other gods, that prophet must die. You may say to yourself, how can we recognize a message that the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the Lord's name and the message does not come true or is not fulfilled, that is a message that the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. Do not be afraid of him. You're going to have, I, I don't need to even go into a lot of detail. If you've been halfway paying attention to the prophetic scene in 2020. You know what I'm talking about. You, hey, the world knows, okay? Okay? How many false prophets we have walking on this earth with false prophecies trying to tell us they know who God has set as president of the United States. Now, we know, according to Daniel, and according to Proverbs, it's only God who sets up kings and God who sets up leaders. He does this. And then it's in Romans 13, too. He has set those authorities. And that's by his will. But let's not be so presumptuous in that we know his will based on what our feelings are. Okay? Now, cross-examine. First Thessalonians 5, starting in verse 20. Do not despise prophecies. So, I don't care what your background is. Don't reject prophecies. You're supposed to like embrace them, bring them in. They are to lift you up. But uh, 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 what does it say? But test all things. Hold on to what is good. Stay away from all, every kind of evil. There's going to be some words, some 
some ministers, some Christians, who want to go to say the good thing out of good intentions, right? But that's actually that those the road to death is paved with good intentions. Okay? That's not necessary for your good. Test all things. Don't despise them, but test all things. And this is now Okay, we're we're not I'm not trying to bog down in prophecies, but here's the point. Listen, Timothy was prophesied over. He was laid on hands, he was blessed as an elder, he's he's in charge of the church at Ephesus, he's the elder of the church in Ephesus. That's where we get one of the letters of Ephesians, right? And now Paul is further encouraging him keep on fight the good fight of faith okay here we go so that having faith in a good conscience so if you ever received a, a prophetic word this is my instruction to you so write it down i have a book uh it's somewhere here where i went through and it's like okay i'm just going to try to write down every prophetic word uh, write it down as soon as you can and keep it don't ever forget it a proper tested prophetic word is from god alone it will carry you, sustain you, and encourage you for years. I, oh, I'm going to give you one. I'm going to give you just off the top of my head, right? You see this You see this blog that you're reading with me right now? You're at Theologic.us. There are, there are 2 million words on that blog, okay? 1.75 of those, 1.75 million words of that was, has written in the last 12 months. I have written pretty much for the last 10 years as a Christian talking about God. And a few years ago, uh, I had a friend who gave me a perfect word. He said, you have books in you. You need to get those out. And, and I was like, yeah, I do have a lot written. I need to return back to my writing. Because I returned back to my writing, I'm actually doing this podcast. I'm actually doing this Twitch. I'm actually doing this YouTube right now. Because that that is that is a direct, and I was like, well, how do I prove that? You know what? Two million words, uh, one point seven five million words in a year. It, all I'm in is talking about God. And it's like, well, we don't really have that in the Bible, but we do have the Word of God. And I'm not saying my my stuff is not the Word of God. I'm not saying that at all. But what I do see in the Bible is that those who are called a minister I have been supernaturally called a minister you and me everybody who's listening to this if you're a Christian you put your trust in Christ you're a minister you're supernaturally called and you're supernaturally gifted now what those gifts are I have no clue is my gift writing no my writing is not that great uh, is it uh, preaching or speaking or whatever no I'm not that great either but uh, but I know what I've been called to, and for me to do it, I'm dependent on God alone and supernatural. So it's a, and when we talk about supernatural, it's not weird or freaky. It's above what it means. It's above me. It's above what we know in the natural. It's above what we know in the material, right? It has to become from God. It's beyond my understanding, beyond my uh, intelligence, anything. It has to come down from God. Okay. So I'm not going to sit here. And, and, and talk about your destiny because let me tell you, let me give you a heads up. If you're saved, you actually been predestined to God by God for God. Or I'm not going to sit here and talk about where you need to be because one, God is sovereign. Or even worse, you have to do this thing in order for God to do that thing. And I will not say any of those things. You will never have me say that trite stuff. Um, I was trying very hard not to cuss, but anyway, I will not cuss. Um, I will, and I will apologize. I don't like cussing. I will not say such things and then go into, because every time somebody says one of those things, they go into this rant. I'm going to call it a rant that is laced with legalistic burdens trying to get you to try harder 
for God to bless you in return. And that's not what any of that is. That's not what that means. I have all my phones going off at the same time. Um, it's the fact that God did all the works. God sent his son. He lived. He died. He rose again. He ascended to the right hand of the Father. Uh, when that happened, he saved his people. You're saved. There's the blessing right there. Okay? Uh, if you're in Christ, you are a new creation. The old has passed and the new has come. That's 2 Corinthians 5.17. If you are in Christ, then there is no condemnation. And your sins, past, present, and future, are all put on the broken body and blood-drained body of our Savior. That is the real blessing. So go after him, run after him, turn your heart and your affections upon him. In other words, fight the good fight of faith. That is what that means. However, when you are directed by God and you keep trusting God, there is one effect you're going to see. Okay? Give me a second. And here's that effect. The Spirit will set your face like rock in the direction of our God, and it is the work of God that will keep your feet pointed in the proper direction. Remember, God operates out of time. Whatever feels like forever to us is not forever to Him. In other words, keep trusting in Him. If you're in Christ but struggling in sin, don't lose hope. Romans 8. Just go and read Romans 8. Where, where you are now is not where you're going to end up. That is a gospel promise. But only God does that work. You do have to be obedient. You have to respond to the gospel command. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Believe the good news. And it all goes back to obeying Christ and trusting in him and taking at his word. So here's the other, here's the other thing. Paul was telling Timothy, and he's really telling all of us, don't shipwreck your faith. Here we go. Which some have rejected and shipwrecked the faith. Among them are Hyannisus and Alexander, who I have delivered to Satan, so that they may be taught not to blaspheme. Man, we're going to have to... That, that's huge. And it says exactly what you think it says, I think. I think you're thinking this, and you're thinking along. It's like, wait, did he just say that? He has taken two people who have shipwrecked their faith, delivered them over Satan, but why? So that they, they who have been delivered to Satan, may not be taught, may be taught not to blaspheme. In other words, Paul is going to treat Hymnesis and Alexander as unbelievers. Because if he treats them as believers, then what they are preaching and teaching is actually blasphemy to God and to Christ. And he's like, you know what? I'm just going to I'm gonna let God handle them. That's the only thing. You can't control people. Paul did the only thing he could do, okay? So in other words, don't say God is this when the, when the Bible says God is that. Paul was so grieved to the core about those who have shipwrecked in their faith that he'd rather turn them over to Satan rather than to blaspheme God. And you might think that is strange, but always keep this in mind. Where we are at now is not where we're going. Somebody might be in sin right now. They might be in the clutches of Satan himself. But salvation belongs to the Lord, for he is the only one mighty to save. To turn blasphemers over to Satan might seem like a gamble, but it's the only sheer grace of our Lord and Savior that can bring anyone home. Go and read. I'm going to challenge you something. Go and read Romans 1. Okay, go. You're going to have to read past verse 17. Okay, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel for the just shall live by faith. Okay, go and read past that. Let me tell you something. It sounds like God is turning over uh, unbelievers, us into our own wickedness. When we decide to sin, he's going to turn us over. I always, always read that with a sense of like, they're, oh, yeah, they're just they're just doomed to hell. No, 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 no. God didn't say that. God didn't say they're doomed to hell once I turn them over. He's going to turn them over in their, in their sin and all the consequences thereof. But guess what? 
If you flip that page, you go to first two. It's his kindness was meant for their repentance, our repentance. Even if they are so far gone, they are murderers, they are they are praising other people to sin. Hey, at that end, only God can save them. Because only God can save you and he, he can only save me. And some people think that they are not shipwrecked in their faith. They walk away from the church, never return. They will think, yeah, I still believe in trusting God or I, I know God exists. But here's the thing. You have removed yourself from the community of God. Guess what? That is disobedience. That is shipwrecking. Then without staying in the word or letting God preach the good news to, to you, you start to miss any kind of good news. So where are you going to turn to? Because the world has bombarded us with what they thought is what they think is good news. Now, I've been on this earth for 45, 46 years. I've been on this earth for 46 years. I've seen 46 years of the world trying to preach to us. Guess what? It's crap. It's wrong. It's evil. It's wicked. It's, it's, and it, it, here's the thing. It's not even the same message. It, it has changed dramatically over my lifetime. And now I read history. It's completely changed. It's a moving target. How is that good news? Right? That doesn't even make sense. How is that good news? Where the good news of Jesus good news of Jesus Christ has been since the creation of all things. Since the first moment sin entered into the world. What did what did God say to Adam and Eve? Right? Let's check this out. I'm gonna take you to I want you to I want you to lay eyes on this. All right. You're going to like, Joe, you, you say this all the time. I'm like, yeah, we'll deal with it. Okay. Here's what he says. I will. He tells, he tells Satan, Hey, I'm, I will put hostility between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. So in other words, from the beginning, from the beginning, God is preaching the good news. His good news has been consistent. His good news has been rock solid. His good news has been absolute. His good news, it actually has come to fruition. Okay? It actually true. Now, what is the world? Look at its track record. I can, let, let's have a philosophy. Let's go ahead and do Western philosophy, Eastern philosophy. Let's just roll that in. Constantly changing truths. And now truth is not truth anymore. Okay. Yeah. So where's the good news at? It's something that's going to change your mind in about in a few years. Something that's going to be completely different in 50 years. So where are you going to turn to? Because the world has bombarded us with what they think is good news. And I say this again, the sad fact in my short life of 45 plus years it has changed dramatically. Or listen to the good news of Satan, whose lies have not changed of all eternity. Well, that's one constant. Satan, you have him. His his good news hasn't changed. But here's his good news. Do not love the Lord your God. Because he is not for you, and he will forget you, just like he does everyone else. My friends, don't shipwreck your faith. Just keep your eyes on God. Hey, you know what? I can't tell you the hundreds and hundreds of stories I've seen about people being hurt by the church, seeing things that that has dirt that has wrecked their faith. It really has questioned is God good and real and true to what he says. And we're putting that based on what man has done and not on what God has done. Okay? What has God asked you to do? He is it's the gospel command for you. Keep your eyes on God. Confess your sins quickly because he is faithful and just to forgive you and me of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Repent right now for the kingdom of God is here right now. Okay? Here's the prayer. Almighty Savior, 
As the song goes, we are the little ones that belong to you, but we are the weak ones, and you are strong. And I have seen prophecy sustain me through my darkest times and sustain others through, through trials and tribulations. God, help us all to gladly receive these words and test them against your word so they can sustain us all of our days. Lord, we pray for those who have walked away from the faith in church and using modern philosophies to make sense of who you are. Only you can reveal to mankind who you really are. You would So you would shine your glory, show your face, smile down upon us, be gracious in the light of your countenance, and give us peace. We love you. The prophecies you have given over me that have been from you, that have been tested against your word, that would deliver would be delivered by your spirit and out of the mouths of faithful servants, would you always bring them to remembrance and remind me of your sweet encouragement and faithfulness? My Lord, I have fought for so long, and I have failed so many times, but your strength renews me. Then I can go back to war and slaughter the giants in the land, because they will all fall because of what your son has done. Lord, give me the faith of your Son. Write your word upon my heart. Never let your spirit depart from me, so I can believe and trust in you, so I that I might not sin against you. Keep my conscience clean by continuously gently speaking to me when I am in your presence or wandering in the wilderness. I have already tried to shipwreck my faith, and I am no better than others who have strayed. Keep me in your hands and do not let me go, for I am not strong enough, and surely I will die if I am not with you. You are my crown and my goodness forever, forevermore. Amen. Okay, so we are going to be, the channel is going to be uh, not live on Friday. Uh, so you will not see this on Twitch. I'm going to go on vacation. Uh, I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to spend time with family and uh, go off into the woods. So join us Monday, May 31st. I have a brand new schedule. We're going to stream five days a week, actually twice on Monday. Uh, and I will explain the new format. I'm going to go and pray about it. Uh, I think I am selling. I've kind of like hinted and kind of teased and kind of see like, yeah, I think I'm going to do this and that. But I think I'm going to go five days a week. But um, I want to pray about what is mine to do and see how far that goes. Okay. So uh, I love you. If you have any prayer requests, please, please, please send those in because I will pray over you. In fact, I may have a, a time where I'll uh, show you my prayer journal. And, and show you how that how I pray and maybe it'll help you too okay later